we're continuing our discussion about secondary research and the practice that it really is. It really is a big part of all the research. And as I mentioned previously, it's a big deal in the aspect of making certain you have data that's out there that's recognizable by somebody that might be on the line to sit there and try to finance your business. They're going to look for stuff like that. They're going to look also for the primary, but they're going to look for overall the big picture as to how your business will fit into the overall marketplace of today. That's what they're looking for. They don't want to put money into an idea that's already dead and gone or that's past its peak. They want to put their money into something that is going to be viable long term. So typical applications, demand estimation, quantification, qualifying the future market. Are you hitting a segment that's re that's relational? Is it part of the country that's going to be thriving in this particular area? What kind of media channel are you going to be going in? And you want to be looking at the medium there. The application, are you using it in the right way? And what are your sales level? How big is the market share, the growth rate out there? Use some environmental scanning. Look on the social, culture, regulatory aspect. Is government going to be impeding that area? Or is it going to be opening it up to help you? Is, is your program actually going to be expanding in the aspect of people will want to come to your service? They want to come to buy your product. Look in the segmentation. Divvy up the customers, the regions, the territories, and the characteristics you are going to be appealing to that. If you're going to open a bakery shop, what kind of bakery shop are you going to have? A French bakery? Oh, wait a minute. What about one that appeals to this segment over here or one that appeals to this over here? Pay attention to it, or maybe you can have something that appeals to a broader range with some specialty niches in the process. There's all kinds of things you can look at, but when you do, make certain there's a market for it, and that's what research is all about. Pay attention to buyer behavior. The buyer always turns right when they walk in the door. Well, actually, it's true. Okay, so, so what do you put up next to the door? Pay attention to that. Do you have your best foot forward? When you go into a store like Costco, they rotate the stuff by the front door just about every third day. They got new tables, new products over there. So pay attention to how people that are highly successful in business really sit down and help shoppers shop. If you go into Costco, they actually have reports as to how Costco deliberately moves stuff to confuse the consumer so they wander around the store. So you go in to buy two things, you walk out with 17 things, and you thought you'd pay $4 to, for each item, and all of a sudden you're coming out with this giant bill you never expected to pay, but it's all cool stuff that you bought because you found it by, by paying attention to the Costco hide-and-seek method of pursuing products. Pay attention to people that are successful in your area especially. Purchase frequently. How often do they buy your product? That would also help you determine how much you rotate the product on the shelves and what your turnover rate should be. Media usage, make certain that, that data trends, they need to be descriptive for an explanation diagnosis that you're going to be using for somebody else to see. The quality of secondary research varies and problems can be subtle. You may think you have an exactly perfect match with your business and what you're seeing on the secondary data, and it's not. So pay attention to what that could be. International data is kind of hard to find it, especially accurate stuff, because you have cultural issues where you may not be familiar with something that's happening over in France, and they have a cultural way of dealing with this type of fashion or this type of food or this type of whatever your product or service may be. The root dilemma is, does this actually address the question that you're looking to find an answer for? And conversely, why reinvent the wheel if the data is already sitting there? So you got to pay attention to both because it's a good thing and a bad thing. All rolled into one. So who this is a big fun, big thing. Make certain you find out who paid for the research. Okay. Now, I hate to say this, but an awful lot of scientists out there really are for sale. And so it's a matter of, okay, I want you to study this. And they got a hundred thousand dollar grant, hundred thousand dollar grant. Okay. Well, it's not going to be the necessarily the best scientific study. Well, for a hundred thousand, I can study, I could deal with the numbers. Unfortunately, those dialogues happen. And sometimes they happen on the inside rather than the outside. But the reality is pay attention to the research. Don't assume that that a company that does this is interested in this over here. They're interested in selling a product no matter what. And sometimes it is no matter what. So be careful who paid for it. Motives matter as to why the research was done. Because if the it was paid for by this type of organization, 
they're going to want the results to look like this to make certain their product or their service looks really good out there. So conducted the research, experts on familiar ground, make certain a novice is out of their depth a lot of times. So if, if you're in that area, make certain that you know the person that's preparing that and that they're expert, not the novice, and they have a real representation. Who, who participated in the study? If you're going to go into a low-income area and have a product that costs at the top end of the spectrum, well, that's not going to fit. So make certain the who fits really well. Okay, so good or bad sample, bad samples are often unredeemable. Sometimes you simply can't use them. It just depends how it's written. So focus in as to what your niche is, what your demographic is. You may want to have a product that's deliberately designed to be a low cost product out there for a huge market. So pay attention to that versus this over here. Don't get them mixed up. Have a focal point of all your research. How is the methodology, how they did this available? Sometimes it really helps. Well, we had a focus group. How big was the focus group? Well, we just had one. Well, and you publish something on one focus group? No, you don't want that. Okay, so pay attention to how they did it. How much information is available on that method, depending on how it is, and pay attention to the different aspects. If they have proxies, okay, proxies are problematic. Don't sit down and accept a report that, in my opinion, and a lot of categories are often not standard. So go back, try to research the questions they ask and see if they're intelligent questions or not. If you could be any animal, which one would you be? Believe it or not, that's a human resource question asked in somebody's interview. How is that intelligent that by any standard? It's not, and it's not based by a professional. It's based by some amateur trying to pretend they actually know what they're doing, and they don't. So be careful about the aspect of the iron truth. The iron truth is all data is partial and subject to error. That's just part of it. And you're going to be all excited about some data, and you're going to find out that it's just junk data, not worthwhile considering. The best way to do it is you find some, whoa, look at this. Make certain you confirm with another report that says, whoa, look at this too. You want to have multiple sources and make certain the sources are trustworthy. The greater the diversity in methods and sampling, the more powerful the confirmation. And, and make certain that if you suspect something's wrong with it, if it's in your craw, go back and cross-check it with something else to confirm that data. It may not be worth investigating. Always start by asking what secondary data is available for your project. That's always the best way before you dive into primary research or secondary research is fabulous. Never take secondary data, though, at face value. You want to have multiple reports saying the same thing. Make certain that, that it's, there's no substitute for investment and having some type of a market intelligence system. If you have an ongoing company and you're out there trying to develop this, making certain you're cutting edge on a regular basis, there's nothing more important than having a market intelligence system you can access. IT problem is significant because of the fact there's so much spamware out there. It's difficult to find results, but pay attention and hopefully it can work out for you if you follow a lot of the guidelines you talked about here. Internal scan, external scan, your expected customer demography, your buyer behavior, and be certain of the source of your secondary data. These are some of the best practices in the aspect of screening secondary data for your uses to help you become successful. Take care.